now i would like to discuss research process in social sciences the term research is defined by different experts in different ways one of the simplest definition is given by the term research itself research is bifurcated as research means searching again and again search is the basic for any research more comprehensive definition is given by uh, it is a systematic search of modification of the existing knowledge or finding new knowledge that is a most popular definition with regard to research it has two parts one is it is a systematic search and the second part is it deals with the knowledge knowledge uh, it increases knowledge no doubt this every research either improvises knowledge or it increases knowledge but the first part is more important in our discussion that is all inquiry is not research but inquiry which has a, a clear rules and regulations comes under research that is it is a systematic process now we have to discuss what are the different steps in the systematic research in this slide we have 12 steps of research process actually in our discussion we are confining into nine slides some of the steps are overlapping that is why we are have 12 steps here i am discussing the steps first one is selection of a topic in the slide is second and the Uh, third slide uh, steps are called uh, defining research problem and objective of research both are clubbed together and we mention as formulation of a research problem then third one is review of literature fourth one is formulation of hypothesis and the fifth one is research design uh, and uh, uh, here sample design is shown separately but in our discussion we discuss sample design as a part of the research design therefore we clubbed both these steps and uh, referred as research design the next one is data collection uh, and here execution of the project is a separate one we clubbed both of these steps and mentioned it as data collection or execution of the project the next step is called data analysis then generalization and interpretation and final step is called uh, reporting the research first step of the research process is selection of a topic or identification of the research problem the research while selecting the research problem it should be keep in mind that problem should be according to the interest of the researcher that is the basic criteria while selecting a research problem and uh, uh, even though it is the first step of research problem it is not an easy task once charles darwin uh, says that uh, getting a research problem is more difficult than solving it 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 shows the difficulty of the selection of a problem that is uh, identification is more difficult than solution of a problem similarly while we are selecting a problem again you keep in mind that uh, a famous saying like uh, uh, a problem of well put means half done that means a, a, a good start means you are almost complete half of your work therefore even though you take much more time for selection of a problem it is not a wastage of time it is fruitful then where you get uh, the problems actually from your daily activities you can get uh, different types of problems I important sources of problem is uh, the for foremost one is intellectual curiosity or intellectual pursuit of the individual while we are learning a particular theory or a particular aspect we have certain curiosity or doubts For, from which you can identify a problem similarly a second source is called a practical solution some practical difficulty may outwit with the help of a solution that is another source of a problem similarly a part of social pro problem planning you may generate a problem or it is because of a policy making so this is the first step of research problem formulation of a research problem by formulation of a research problem we make the identified problem in a researchable format means we are sharpening our focus and organizing our research area 
in order to sharpen the area and organize the area we have to do two steps one is defining the identified problem properly and a second one is setting the research objectives by doing these two you can set a broad research question as well as the uh, sub questions of research area by doing by uh, identifying by formulating the problem you can avoid beating all the bushes and uh, you can pinpoint your area that is the peculiarity of formulation of the research problem martin says that while formulating a problem you should keep three questions in mind first one is what the researcher need to know and the second one is why the researcher need to know and the third one is what are the possible answers for the research questions by keeping these three questions in mind one has to define his problem and he has to explain the objective of the research so that he can formulate the problem and his focus should be clear next step is review of literature by reviewing we are uh, we simply reading out and noting out the existing work in the field review is of two types one is theoretical review and another one is empirical review theoretical review links your research area with the, your discipline research your discipline that is called a theoretical review the purpose of theoretical review so that you can formulate a research framework also for your research and a second one is empirical review empirical review is uh, uh, all the previous studies that in the field that includes distant past uh, as well as the recent past studies and you are reviewing almost all works in the area so that uh, you became the researcher became master of the field there are some additional benefit for empirical review the first thing is it provides enough information with regard to past knowledge in the field so that the researcher became experts in the field second one he can get the research gap by reviewing the uh, literature research gap means some of the uh, uh, parts are uncovered by previous studies therefore in order to fill that gap uh, the researcher can uh, have his own research therefore he can find out uh, his own research gap by reviewing literature similarly another benefit is he can avoid replication or overlapping studies that is without proper review of literature if one do his research work and after his research he may find out that someone else has already uh, do the same work that means he simply waste his resources as well as time in order to avoid that uh, review of literature is a benefit similarly another benefit is it uh, acts as a rich source for hypothesis in order to uh, create hypothesis existing study given enough information that is another one and uh, uh, another benefit is uh, one can follow a proper methodology by reviewing literature different studies are following different uh, methodology with regard to data collection data estimation measurement and the like therefore he can uh, find out different methodologies and uh, uh, he can verify what one is the uh, uh, best one and he can adopt such a uh, most benefited methodology for his study that is another benefit of the review of literature thus review uh, provide much more information in the field for the researcher the next step is formulation of hypothesis hypothesis is a tentative statement that can be verifiable Uh, and uh, again for formulation of hypothesis includes relationship between two or more variables of which one is dependent variable and others are independent variable therefore we uh, relate the variables and make a statement uh, that statement may or may not be true but it will be verified uh, later on such a, a statement is called uh, a hypothesis while formulating a hypothesis we have to formulate two type of hypothesis two opposing hypothesis one is null hypothesis and another one is alternative hypothesis null hypothesis is generally nullify the test 
that and the alternative hypothesis is known as researcher's hypothesis. That means uh, null hypothesis always uh, put against the general notion. That means even though we know that uh, there is a proper relationship between two variables, still we set null hypothesis as there is no relationship. So that we can set alternative hypothesis as there is some relationship. And uh, the formulation is in, in such a way that if we reject null hypothesis, we automatically accept alternative hypothesis and vice versa. And uh, the important sources of hypothesis are comes first one is theories. Theories are a rich source of hypothesis. By, uh, while studying theories, theory states relationship between variables so that we can make a statement uh, connecting the variables. For example, if we take the basic theory of economics uh, of law of demand in which you know that uh, uh, there is an inverse relationship between price and uh, demand so that you can formulate such a hypothesis. That is a theory uh, act as a source of hypothesis. Similarly, a second source of hypothesis is past studies. Existing previous studies also give some information with regard to variables so that one can formulate a hypothesis. Similarly, a third one is observation. Observation of the variables and uh, its premises will give a relationship between variables so that one can formulate a hypothesis, hypothesis through his observations. Similarly, another one is uh, a discussion with the experts in the field, expert talks what we referred. Uh, that means uh, experts are uh, a rich source pro with a, a proper discussion with the experts in the field will give proper information with regard to hypothesis. Sometimes even a discussion with a layman who are working with the area will provide infor enough information with the formulation of hypothesis. These are the different uh, sources of hypothesis. Next step is research design. It is a blueprint of data collection, data measurement and data estimation. A blueprint means simply a plan. Like uh, before doing the actual field work, we have a plan with regard to. Like uh, you know, uh, before construction of a house, we set a plan for house. Similarly, before doing the uh, uh, data collection and uh, estimation, we have a proper plan how to do all those things that is called a research design. The types of research design depends on the aim of the research. Aim of the research is broadly categorized into four exploration, diagnosis, description as well as experiment. These are the four types of uh, aims of research based on which you can fix your research design. For example, if you uh, need a, a exploration, then you have to adopt exploratory designs. If you, your aim is experimentation, then you have to adopt a experimental design and so on. That is the way you have to select a, a particular research design. As the part of the research design, we also discuss sampling design, observational design, statistical design and uh, operational design. First of all, we discuss sampling design. Sampling design is a technique through which we can uh, have a representative part of the population. Population is again defined by targeted population and a survey population. Target population means a population that involves complete item for which the research results required. And uh, a survey population is not the complete population, a part of the population from which the actual samples are drawn is referred as survey population or survey population is otherwise known as sampling population or sampling frame. We have to form the sampling frame. After forming the sampling frame, uh, then we have to decide what uh, sampling technique is adopted. There are different types of sampling techniques broadly categorized into probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Pro as far as possible, probability sampling is desirable one as it gives uh, equal chance for every items. Otherwise, if you adopt non-random sampling or non-probability sampling, uh, the selection will be purely by the 
interest of the researcher. Therefore, it is desirable to have probability sampling. Then, uh, after fixing the probability uh, uh, technique of sampling, then we have to decide the size of samples. What uh, the, uh, with regard to the size of samples, there is no hard and fast rule. There is only some rules of thumb is exist uh, in the field, and you can fix the size of sample by uh, verifying uh, certain sites like survey monkeys and the like. Now, uh, we should bear in mind that is the size should be uh, enough to represent the population. That is, uh, with regard to size of. Uh, these are the important things we have to discuss with regard to sampling design. Then we have to move into observational design. Observation is an important tool for uh, data collection. And there are different types of observations, like a participant observation is the non-participant observation, direct observation, indirect observation and the like. Therefore, if you adopt observation as a tool, then you have to design what types of observation you are used. That is called observational design. Then another one is called a statistical design. While estimating your variables, you have to design what statistical tools are used in your study. There are a number of statistical tools based on variables. We can have a univariate analysis, bivariate analysis and multivariate analysis. In different analysis, there are a number of tools. Therefore, you have to pre-design what type of statistical tools you are adopting for your study, for analysis. That is called a statistical design. And the last one is called operational design. It is called overall design of your research product, project. How your research uh, is in overall sense. That is called operational design. Data collection or execution of the work. Data collection, by data collection we have two types of uh, data, one is primary data and another one is secondary data. Primary data means first hand information collected by the researcher himself from the informant or samples. Whereas secondary data is uh, information already collected by someone else and uh, a, a published. Uh, important sources of secondary information are uh, books, journals, research articles uh, and uh, census data, sample survey information and all those things. And uh, primary, while if you are collecting primary data then you have to uh, design data collection tools. Uh, uh, that depends on what type of data collection technique you adopt. If you are uh, making observation then uh, observational tool has to be designed. If you are making an interview then you have to design what type of schedules or questionnaire uh, you have to. All those things are related with the data collection. After designing all these tools, then you have to conduct a actual collection of information from the uh, field. The, the collection may be done by the researcher himself or by uh, some research assistants. The collection of information from the field is referred as execution of the research work. Analysis of data is the next step. Under analysis of data, we have uh, three steps. One is organization of data, then estimation of the uh, collected information, then testing hypothesis. There are two methods for analyzing information. One is manual and another one is machine analysis. In earlier days, uh, there is only manual analysis is there which is very difficult also. Nowadays uh, with the emergence of computers, most of the analysis is done with the help of computers that is called uh, machine analysis. Uh, uh, therefore, we are discussing machine analysis here where analyzing data first we have to organize the collected informations. We are collecting uh, raw information. The raw informations are organized uh, uh, with the help of computers. Now, in analysis of data, uh, in machine analysis, the most difficult and time consuming one is organization of data. 
that is we you have to feed all the information collected with the system and coding all the information decoding all the information uh, uh, everything has been done uh, therefore organization is a, a, a most consuming task in uh, in analysis nowadays then next one is estimation of the collected information with the uh, emergence of sophisticated uh, softwares estimation became so simple very complex calculation can be estimated within uh, seconds or minutes therefore estimation became a simplest task nowadays in estimation you have to tool different uh, you have to use different statistical tools like uh, percentages uh, or averages or regression uh, or factor analysis and number of tools are there you have to use all those tools uh, that you already pre-designed with the study using uh, the pre-designed tools you have to estimate the collected information that is called estimation then uh, after estimation you have to test hypothesis you, in uh, in our fourth step we uh, said uh, we formulate certain hypothesis that hypothesis is verified at this stage here we verify the uh, uh, hypothesis with the uh, different uh, tools different uh, tools like uh, chi square uh, t test f test uh, anova are certain uh, parametric tools apart from this we have certain non parametric test like uh, kruskal valley's test manmit new u test and the like with the help of these tests you can test your hypothesis but on the basis of the uh, uh, test results you can accept or reject the null hypothesis this is uh, uh, what we done under the analysis of data next step is interpretation and uh, generalization interpretation requires much proficiency and uh, skill in the field of research with the help of the estimation and uh, testing of hypothesis we have certain results that results should properly interpreted based on your samples the interpretation is based on samples the uh, interpretation may be generalized for your population these two steps are called interpretation and uh, generalization of the work reporting of the research this is the final step of the research process up to this stage we are doing a research work and we find out uh, something new how we convey we are finding out something new to others that is simply reporting the research reporting the research means uh, dissemination of your research work to others by uh, 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 there are two methods to report the research one is oral reporting and another one is written reporting the most popular method is written report therefore we are discussing written reporting here written reporting has three important uh, stages one is preliminary aspects second one is contents of the report and the third one is end matters the preliminary of the report includes title page of the work that uh, includes uh, name of the topic name of the researcher and purpose of the research work followed by uh, certificates and uh, acknowledgments uh, list of tables list of figures and the like which is which is called a preliminary of the work the, it is followed by contents of the report contents or body of the report includes introduction of the research work then significance of the study objective of the study uh, then uh, review of literature uh, data uh, analysis interpretation generalization conclusion all those things are comes under contents of the report and the final part is called end matters end matters includes appendices of the work and bibliography and references and under appendices we have to include a replica of the data collection tools and if there is any complex calculations you have to explain all those things in in uh, appendices and again if you are using some modeling uh, all those things are explained with the appendices these are the different uh,
steps of a research process. Okay, let us uh, now let us have a discussion of all the nine steps. We begin with the we begin with the selection of a topic, then formulation of a research topic, then we move into review of literature. From there, we, we move, again move to formulation of hypothesis, then research design, then data collection or execution, then data processing or data analysis, then we move into uh, interpretation and generalization and finally reporting the research work. These are the different steps of research process. Thank you.